RFK Jr. Bobby Kennedy was on uh, Joe Rogan's show the other day and uh, apparently has, um, when he launched his campaign, he was uh, pretty explicit in some circles that he didn't want to get into um, uh, doing the anti-vax stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. He didn't want that to lead his campaign. Uh, apparently he couldn't help himself with Rogan. I mean, maybe it was just too enticing. Uh, Rogan was too excited about it. Um, the, the worst part about this, ultimately, it seems to me, uh, was that the, uh, that guy, uh, what's his name? Peter Hotez, is that it? Um, who maybe you saw on TV during COVID. This guy, uh, runs an organization that developed a patent-free vaccination for COVID that was distributed uh, to, um, low-income countries around the world. So incredibly anti-Big Pharma. There Save could not lives. be a more anti-Big Pharma action taken because you are undercutting their intellectual property chokehold over vaccines, which is not what, given the fact that particularly Operation Warp Speed was funded by the government, it should have been public property, and it wasn't. So yeah. this is a thumb in the eye or whatever the phrase is and that's what we pharma. should have been talking yes. about the entire time that anti-vax lunatics wanted to tell us that actually it was a big conspiracy to kill your kids i mean the um i i i think that all of the skepticism of uh pharmaceutical companies is warranted and we should be skeptical and yep. in fact i think the best way to deal with this stuff <clears throat> is um to have a very robust program of government manufacturing of a lot of these uh, drugs, vaccinations, um, and a patent reform so that the ability of uh, pharmaceutical companies and even like uh, whatever the, the sort of like second tier pharmaceutical companies want you to just buy the patents and then just sort of like jack up the price uh, is inhibited. Um, However, the idea that you go after somebody who is making a vaccine that completely undercuts the reason why you have skepticism in vaccine in the first place sort of lays bare that there's something else going on here. But it's not about the corporate <clears throat> profit-seeking nature of big pharma. Now we're talking about an undercutting of public uh health and medicine more broadly here is a uh, clip number four this is rfk uh claiming that ivermectin was suppressed by the pharmaceutical industry during covid so that covid vaccines uh, could have an easier time gaining emergency uh, authorization ivermectin also made by big pharma um now of course ivermectin is cheaper plenty of people um prescribed it because there was a um a shortage of ivermectin which is used, you know, for things like if you have a parasite or, you know, if your uh, animal has a parasite. Mm -hmm. So we have plenty of data on how effective ivermectin was. And the answer is not. Yeah, and the uh, the relative uh, cheapness of ivermectin can be overstated too, because if you took it prophylactically, like uh, Joe, one of Joe Rogan's quacks, uh, Brett Weinstein said, it would, lied, or I guess just said without any evidence um, that it was a hundred percent, near a hundred percent. Uh, useful as a prophylactic if people would have been on a regimen of ivermectin monthly that would have been like i don't know 20 more than you pay for streaming services a month to, uh, for pharmaceutical products definitely more than you would pay for the government uh funded vaccine right. which was free free for people all right let's uh hear this uh clip clip number four they had to discredit ivermectin because you know why because there's a federal law the federal law the emergency use authorization statute says that you cannot issue you cannot issue an emergency use authorization to a vaccine if there is an existing medication that has been approved for any purpose that ha that is demonstrated effective against the target illness so they had to destroy ivermectin and hydroxychloroquine and discredited and they had to tell everybody it's not effective because if they had acknowledged that it's effective in anybody the whole 200 billion dollar vaccine enterprise would have collapsed pause it now let's be clear it wasn't 200 billion dollars at that time i mean the 
the sequence, I mean, he is, cor- he, he may be correct. Let's put it this way. If I stipulate that he is correct in regards to what uh, emergency authorization is needed and what uh, situations you need, the, the sequencing is wrong. These were not, uh, these were, these vaccines were not profitable when they were first released. Johnson and Johnson was shut down essentially by the government because of, uh, of production problems and efficacy issues. So it wasn't, you know, taken for granted that there was going to be profits for any one of these individual companies. The idea that the Trump administration wouldn't have wanted to have basically avoided all of this issue. Remember, the the vaccine wasn't even uh, okayed and tried, essentially, until after he lost the election. He could have easily just said, we're going to do ivermectin. But it was somebody in the deep bowels of... Of, of the government who apparently had bets on which pharmaceutical I mean, because this is what you have to believe and you have to, to believe, believe this story it's easier to reverse engineer this story but you have to believe that this was somebody's plan at the time yeah that I'm- and that there is a vast conspiracy certainly not just a pharmaceutical company and the media not even the pharmaceutical industry But to test these things in every single outlet that tested these things, that did actual studies. I would argue. That's what you would have to believe to believe that story. I would argue, too, that if we're going to start asking questions, I have questions about the continued promotion of drugs like hydroxychloroquine and ivermectin, again, manufactured by Big Pharma, where people would have to pay out of pocket, potentially, if they can't get the prescription for it, um, with that money going directly to Big Pharma. Who is motivating those kinds of talking points when People could have gotten vaccinations that would have prevented the worst of COVID for most people when which was already funded up front by the government. Where is the profit in that scenario that I just laid out versus the one where you're being told that you can purchase miracle cures again from big pharma to help with COVID? Yeah, this Who's is funding big uh, pharma more. This there? this is a pharma critique for people who aren't like anti-capitalist, but who are basically anti-human, who think that people generally are nefarious and like this guy Hotez or whatever, getting accosted by people who say they're like, you know, independent journalists hunting pedophiles, getting on yep. the front door. It's disgusting, and uh, being unable to be clear about what this is, I think like it's it's media opportunism for folks because you have to believe every one of these doctors is willing to just let people die because of what some sort of like Fauci brainwave. If you wanted to like poison people with a new concoction, it's absurd, and it leads people into complete like unreality and that like i don't know it's 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 incredibly disgusting um we should also say like the uh what happened after this was um hotez retweeted a um a piece in vice that basically told 100 percent the truth which is that spotify the company that paid hundreds of millions of dollars was 200 million dollars i think it was for joe rogan to be on their network to generate theoretically hundreds of millions of dollars more for the company overall, pulling people into their sort of the closed ecosystem is taking absolutely no responsibility for how they are, uh, the stuff that they're disseminating in terms of public health. And I'll tell you, like, you know, like we've gotten criticism for, 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 you know, uh, uh, putting ads for nicotine uh, toothpicks. And it is, I don't think that criticism is necessarily, um, you know, uh, absurd. Okay, I see it as a, a, a smoking cessation. I've had experience in, in quitting smoking and uh, things like these were very he- helpful to me. But, but the critique in and of itself, I don't think is unreasonable. You don't want, I, it is wrong to be making uh, money, in my estimation, off of products that um, seriously degrade people's health and more so when it's like uh, 
it's done under different auspices. Like, you know, I could see people maybe, you know, like advertising alcohol. That's not healthy for you. But the people who, who drink alcohol have a, br- a broad awareness of like the implications of it. Spotify is making hundreds of millions of dollars in part by creating why both in real time wide scale a diminishment of public health and long term god forbid we have a another pandemic everything that spotify is doing to make money now this is joe rogan's going to do whatever he does i mean the guy's a ding dong and I'm not letting him off the hook. He could even tell certain guests that he doesn't want to discuss COVID when he invites them on and then have other uh, you know, guests talk about it. But the corporation, the big media tech corporation known as Spotify, which is making hundreds of millions of dollars off this, has a responsibility to not put out a product that is harming the public welfare. I don't honestly know why there hasn't been a, a lawsuit here, a liability suit. It'd be a nice civil suit. Because uh, there is no doubt that there is a direct diminishment. And I don't know if it's like the family of somebody who died because they were uh, listening to, um, to, uh, to Rogan's sort of like, uh, you know, anti-vax stuff or whatever it is. But it seems to me that there should be some liability here. This is a massive tech corporation making hundreds of millions of dollars off of this garbage. Yep, and Joe Rogan offering $100,000, which is a fraction of the money that Spotify... Well, first off, yes, in terms of the debate, then he goes on to say, uh, I'll give $100,000 for you to come and debate. Do we um, have that tweet? uh, Yeah. To come and debate RFK on my program. Right. And uh, first off, Hotez would be a fool, I think, to do this. Why? Because the guy is, he's a scientist. He is not trained to go onto a podcast. The person who should go onto a podcast is another podcast. Is Sam Cedar. Uh, yeah. RFK is also not trained as a doctor. He's a lawyer. I mean, even the notion, though, of debating matters of public health is already in and of itself so, a... a, a, a a fanciful notion that only benefits the person who is engaged, who wants the debate to happen because there is no debate. This is what Hotez, this is how it go. Hotez would say there have been many studies that ivermectin is ineffective in treating COVID. And so your whole theory about uh, they had to somehow smear ivermectin as a solution to yeah. COVID. Incidentally, not just big pharma, the Chinese, the Russians, every other country in the world that did not have access to uh, Pfizer and uh, Moderna's vaccines, they also are in on this, right? They're, like China is in on this too because they could have gotten ivermectin. And in that longer... And it would have cost them nothing. But it, like, so Hotez would say that, and then Bobby Kennedy would go like, well, no, that's not true. Here's a study that says it is good. And that's the end of the conversation. There is no way for the viewing public to make that assessment. But all of a sudden, people are just going to walk away and say, like, I saw the debate. And Bobby's a much better speaker and much more confident than this scientist who spends his time actually studying and developing the vaccines than the guy whose job it is to go into a courtroom and make an argument. Yeah. It, or the podcaster whose professional job is to talk right. into a mic with confidence and make it seem like he has actually done the research and examined these things. There is not a single thing. And the reason why I would go and debate that, because I feel quite confident that I have the ability to bullshit my way through any of that situation in the way that those two guys are bullshitting their ways through the situation and do it with the same confidence and the same ability to look into the camera without shyness, without feeling intimidated and say, this is right and that's wrong. Because that's the skill set that's associated with that. Yeah.
And I, like the idea that like the suppression of media opportunists and charlatans on media is like that is how science gets suppressed. No, like if you actually look at China, it is like disciplinary measures towards actual scientists investigating certain <laughs> things, right? Like that's the actual thing. Whether uh, Spotify needs to be able to uh, host a like a litany of charlatans giving horrible public, horribly damaging, possibly deadly public health advice for a long time, and then you know, like I said, there's, he's had guests on who he's told, "I don't want to talk about that. I want to put it behind." him and like i think it's it's gross no i mean he's milking it for engagement and then we're supposed to say like oh this is the the town square the uh place where we're supposed to be delineating these ideas now this is this is a technical technical subject this is something that is uh weighed and uh, poured over by scientists through methodology and through study that is completely inc incongruous with a podcast debate format and so i mean he should not go on there for that very reason because like there's also going to be efforts by uh, rogan or by rfk jr essentially to say well i don't believe that and this is like this little logic uh, hole that i can poke into and you can't once they say, I don't agree that the sky is blue, then what are we debating here? In that longer clip, in a longer clip of, of Rogan and RFK talking about the ivermectin thing, that exact point comes up about the studies. And RFK literally says, um, the people who do studies on ivermectin um, design them intentionally to fail. Um, and he says they did the same thing with vaccine and autism studies as well. How that's, do you refute that? Right. You can't. That, exactly. That's, that's the thing. You, you're, oh, so you're the scientist. You're the guy who makes the studies to fail. So how can we even trust you? It's, it's so there you go. It's, it's self-negating in a cyclical way. It's, it's useless, I think, to, to an extent. And, I, and, I, and there's just like this complete... I, I would say inflated self uh, importance element and it's also just marketing um, in media right now where there is like this belief in that you can debate yourself into uh, some sort of broader understanding on any subject when in reality yeah. sometimes the debate in and of itself is undercutting public good and facts in and of itself because as you say like w when you make everything up for debate as opposed to within the confines of scientific methodology then that means that there's no foundational reality that we can all agree upon and so the nature of the debate is yeah. also in and, in and of itself what should be uh pushed back upon i can't stand this this uh like frankly narcissism from certain media members where it's like it's just really what we're saying just every word that we have to say means something and the back and forth the dialogue is where the value is is found it's not really as much of what you say it's mostly what you cover and what you choose to put into the public sphere of debate more than anything else yeah and this is why that would be doing a it's disservice. gross it's gross acting like uh um, plugging your patreon is actually a civic duty that everybody uh, needs yeah um Well, uh, well, that's not going to be the end of all that, incidentally. I mean, Elon uh, Musk weighed in, you know. Yeah. So. And, and frankly, you know, uh, if I was Hotez, I would be, I mean, he's already been accosted in his home literally that day. Uh, right outside, taking out his trash, it seems like. Yeah. Um, I, I don't even know if we should play it. No. Um, uh, to Some give freak. it. And uh, I saw Jimmy Dore saying that he was lying and uh oh, false about, flag about that yeah it was a false flag type yeah. of situation well jimmy does um, if, if if but the, jimmy doors to be fair jimmy doors producer uh wrote that tweet oh yeah. gotcha and he's been fired yeah and he's okay. been fired gotcha. yeah it, well if the un public understood actually the impact of the uh what the significance of their messaging on covid whether it's rogan talking about the prophylactic ivermectin 100 percent um those guys have a tough time paying their mortgages because people would be really upset with what, how they killed family You should members. take have you, a lot, lots of prophylactic usage of things uh, that, for, for Rogan's benefit, including the like brain uh, force or whatever the hell he sells on his website. Um, like he undercuts public health by <laughs> con constantly promoting alternative solutions that, that yeah. coincidentally enrich himself where you can pay $60 out of pocket for some unregulated supplement and then really feel like you're ahead of the curve in a country that 
puts you on an island with your health care. You just got you're you're screwed. Yeah. It's all for profit. And so instead of actually trying to make people healthier, just just do the alternative profit model that makes Joe Rogan rich. That's what health care is for that kind of guy, that kind of yeah, guy. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, islands and health, uh, Google Robert F. Kennedy Jr. and Samoa measles. Yeah, we'll be returning to that later. Yeah, we'll. I mean, we'll get uh, to all of this at, at one point. Um, and you know, my um, the uh, you know the RFK stuff. I have been you know sort of like hesitant hesitant to weigh in on because um, of both a sort of like. I mean, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that we had a deep personal relationship, but uh, definitely someone who. I have known for many years, uh, I have worked with at various times, was very supportive of me, uh, incredibly so, at Air America, and um, my hesitancy is not exclusively or even necessarily primarily uh, about that, but uh, part of it is just sort of like trying to get a sense of what he's doing. It's very odd to me that yeah. he has been running in the Democratic primary and appearing primarily in right-wing outlets. I get the idea that they're, you know, he's not going to be allowed on to uh, mainstream cable news. Um, I get that. Uh, but there's no doubt that he, he wouldn't be able to get on, like, uh, independent media, it seems to me. It just doesn't, it, it does not feel like a concerted effort to reach Democratic primary voters. Yeah. Um, and you can also we'll look from the outside. I have sympathy, too, for like the fact that, of course, of people alive in America today, it makes sense for RFK Jr. to be more conspiracy minded than the average person, given what has happened to his family. But at the same time, like what what's happening right now is dangerous. Some of the stuff he was saying about Wi-Fi and like, uh, I mean, man, that's that's deep, deep conspiracy whole stuff that he was espousing on Rogan. But I guess, you know, honestly, the Rogan audience, they should just unplug their Wi-Fi. They shouldn't go on the Internet anymore. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs>